And so I texted him and I asked him, why are you cheating on me with, with someone you tell me is your cousin? And he told me, I've not cheated on you, I've replaced you. Good evening and praise the name of the Lord. Is that time again when we bring to you the gorgeous woman uh, live from CTN TV, Nairobi, Kenya. And all of us uh, who are watching us over the world on social media platforms, thank you for joining in. Share with your friends and family. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, CTN TV, so that you get all the episodes of Gorgeous Women. You'll be inspired, encouraged, challenged, and feel re-energized that you're not the only one going through the valley of the shadow of death. And as always, we do our best to bring to you wonderful guests that will inspire you. And it is out of such one guest that we hosted, and I think our one of the awards uh, in the U.S. Praise Factor Awards, uh, they got to locate uh, the Gorgeous Woman Show, and we won international host of the year. Uh, that is Reverend Ruth Amoyo. We bless the Lord. Congratulations to me, and of course to CTN TV that also won international TV of the year. So join me as I welcome my guest today. Her, her name is Jackie Waweru. She's been through failed relationships, a single mom, through depression, addiction. And she's come here to encourage a woman out there and to tell you that all is not lost. Because when she found Christ, she found a true meaning. So welcome my guest, uh, Jackie. Thank Karibu sana. Sante, sante. Yeah, tell us a bit uh, about who you are. Where are you? Are you born? Are you, do you have siblings? Um, you, do you have parents? Um, you had intimated you're an orphan, so you could tell us a little bit of what happened. Okay, so my name is Jacqueline Oero, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacqueline is a model, mm -hmm. is a motivational speaker. Great. And uh, I also have siblings. I mm -hmm. have one brother from mm -hmm. my biological mother, mm -hmm. uh, my biological parents, rather. Mm -hmm. And I have foster sisters, three foster sisters yeah. from my mom's friend. When she passed on, I went to stay with her. Oh. So yeah, those are my foster parents and my foster sisters. Okay. I was born in, I was born and raised in Embu, mm -hmm. and I came to Nairobi back in 2007 when I was still in high school. Yeah. So that's literally who Jackie Great. is. Great. So yes. what happened to your parents? How so, old were you when they died? Okay, my dad died when I was, I think, six years, because it was in 1996, mm -hmm. due to meningitis, mm -hmm. and my mom had cancer, cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. She passed on in 2009. That was when I was in Form 4. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, that must have been difficult for it you. It was really mm -hmm. difficult, especially when I lost my mom and I was in Form 4. Mm -hmm. It was a great loss, because it was the second time I was approaching my exams, and it was such a moment, but... I, I went through it and it was okay. I did so at, at that point is when you relocated to your foster parents' home? Uh, no, I relocated to my foster parents in 2012. In 2009, my uncles came for me mm -hmm. and they took me to one of my aunties in Nyeri. So I stayed with my auntie in Nyeri and that's when I met my first love, uh, the story that I'm going to be giving today. Okay, yes. so how did you choose uh, mod modeling as a career path? Um, is it that you just loved it or you just had to do what you had to do? No, I've always uh, aspired to be a model. Yeah. I love being a model, mm -hmm. but a model in a good way because you know models are given names. Yeah. But I'm passionate about modeling, I'm passionate about brand. Mm -hmm. So yes, I became a model back in 2012. Mm -hmm. I participated in Miss World, Kenya, Nyeri County, ah. and Miss Tourism in Nyeri County as well. I was also in the face of faith pageantry but I stepped out because of work I okay. stood in time okay yes so you are working as well yes I'm working and I work you? in I work at a healthcare industry I'm a PA okay yes and you also a mother 
Yes, and I'm also a mother to a beautiful baby girl. How old is she? She's three now. She's three now. Yes. Great. Yes. That looks like a very good story as we listen to this young one. You know, she's been through so much and it always touching when I see young ladies like her step up and just share their story boldly because uh, most of us at their age, um, I don't think we were able to articulate how we felt, maybe because of the stigma or probably how we were brought up or cultural settings. But when you, we see ladies like Jackie, that are willing to step up and just be an inspiration. What a joy. So our uh, viewer, don't touch that dial. Share with your friends and family. Let them know that Jackie Wabero and Reverend Ruth Wamoyo are having an interview. See you after the break. So welcome back, our viewers. So Jackie, um, all those titles to your name. Um, you're a model, you're a mother, you're a motivational speaker. So what keep, uh, keeps you going? What keeps me going is the love of God. Yeah. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think I would be where I am if it was not for God. Mm -hmm. He picked me up when I was in my ashes. Mm -hmm. I did so many mistakes in my past, but mm -hmm. he didn't let go of my hand. Mm -hmm. So God has been there for me. Amen. And I don't think anyone can come and say that, Jackie, this is all you're doing. No. It's all for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Without God, I wouldn't be where I am today. So Amen. that keeps me going. And also my daughter, she looks up to me. Mm -hmm. She has a mom. And so I want her to be inspired by who I am and for her to grow up in Christ and for her to know that all is not lost, even though you have, you make mistakes or you go through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. You still have to rise up. Oh, great. Yes. So you say that at one point when you located to your relatives in Yeri, you found the love of your life. Yes. So this man who knocked you down, can you tell us about him? How was the experience? Uh, because for you to have fallen in love, it must have been quite a fall. Yes. Yeah. So for me, it was first uh, love at first sight. Mm -hmm. So you. Yes. It okay. was love at first sight. Not, he, not the other way. <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> I think I fell in love with him first. Yeah. Because um, I, I saw him just. Uh, at my auntie's place, I just went out and I saw this guy and I called him and we started talking and that's he how... He was a neighbor? Yes, he was a neighbor apparently. Mm -hmm. So that was back in 2009 when I completed my form 4. Mm -hmm. My uncles came for me from school because my mom, I had lost my mom then that year. We went to Nyeri and so that's when I met him. I met him in December 2009. Mm -hmm. And so when we started... When we started talking, something connected. That's why I said it was love at first sight. We didn't at the date um, uh, become friends and then started dating. No, it was just uh, instant. Yes. Wow. And um, apparently, one thing about these guys that my relatives were not into it. He, they were saying like, Jackie, no, this guy is not good for you. Please don't enter into a relationship. Could with it him. be because you were uh, you needed to belong? You had gone through so much and you just needed. Um, to be loved, uh, uh, you know, after now you've gone through it? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, I think they always say that, you know, your elders have, they see something in a guy. Mm -hmm. If that guy is not good for you, they'll tell you, even a mom or a dad, they'll mm -hmm. tell you this person is not good for you. But for me, it was this thing like, I just want to, you know, feel how people feel. Mm -hmm. I want to enter into a relationship. I want to have a boyfriend. Was it your first love? Yes, it was my first oh, love. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we stayed with him for, I uh, met him in 2009, December, 2010, January, February. I was still in Nyeri. But now, because my aunties and my uncle were not into this guy, and they were so, like, no, you don't they didn't mm -hmm. want to see me with him and they felt ah, you, are in, you are really into my life so I decided to leave my auntie's place and go to my another auntie of mine in Akuru so in March that's when I left Nyeri and went to Nakuru we were still talking with this guy so our relationship continued all the way through 2010, 2011 I stayed with him for 5-6 years so in 2016 uh, that's when we, I broke up with him. And so I broke up with him because I met him cheating on me with my foster sister. Oh my God. Yes. Word. So I met uh, my foster sisters. The way I came to stay with them 
2012. In 2010, 2010 when I went to Nakuru, I went to Utali College. So that's why I did my course till 2011, 2012, April. Then that's when I graduated. Then I relocated to Malindi. In Malindi, uh, I got a job there at a law firm mm -hmm. and I stayed. We were still talking with this guy, we were still communicating. But now, since it was a long distance relationship, things were not really comfortable. So my aunties and my uncles were not still okay with me hanging out with this guy. Mm -hmm. And also, they always thought that I was a bad influence because why would you move out from this place to go to the other and go to Malindi? and you haven't even told anyone. So, yes, uh, uh, when I left my, I left to Malindi, I went, I worked there for almost two years. So when you were dealing with these guys via mobile phone or he used to yeah. visit and you visit? No, we didn't used to visit. It, it was entirely um, calls, okay. calls, messages like that. So in 2012, 2013, 2012 when I came back to Nairobi, I didn't come back when I was coming for holidays because in Malinda I didn't have any relatives. I only had one auntie mm -hmm. and we used to come for um, uh, holidays back, uh, back home. So 2012 end, I came to Embu where my first appearance now was mm -hmm. staying. Mm -hmm. And that's how I connected with them. That's how I became part of their family because they took me in as their daughter when everything was lost. Mm -hmm. When my relatives left me, when everyone left me to be me in the, with the world mm -hmm. yes and so we continued our relationship so that's when you found this guy with one of your foster sisters no i met this guy in 20, um, with my foster sister it was in 2016. Mm -hmm. 2011 2010 2011 2012 2013 2014 i came back now to nairobi completely i resigned from my work in malindi and came back to nairobi because i wanted now to upgrade my education mm -hmm. So 2015, I went to KC University. I upgraded my uh, my education, and now that's when now we started visiting each other. Cause now I'm in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. He's around. It was easier for him to come to Nairobi other mm -hmm. than Malindi. Malindi, yeah. Yeah. So in 2015, that's when now I even connected with my foster sisters because they were also staying in Nairobi. So we used to go to these house parties. Mm -hmm. Remember then I was not this kind of a Christian girl at yes. I'll go to church, I'll pray. No, I yeah. didn't know God then. Mm -hmm. So we used to go to parties, house parties, drinking. And that's when I invited my boyfriend to come and meet my foster sisters. Mm -hmm. In 2015 as well, I was doing my, as I said, I was a model, so I was doing my pageantry. This is when I was doing the Miss Tourism uh, pageantry. Yeah. So, and he was also a model. So uh, I invited him to one of my gigs, Miss Tourism, and he told me I won't come, rather I will invite my friends to come. So I was like, it's okay. And so 2016 when I was doing my gig in Nyeri, he sent his friends. And my, I remember my foster sister coming and telling me, why is your boyfriend following me on Twitter? Like, see, it's okay, your family. So oh. I don't mind. But little did I know that they had a rapport back in 2015 when I was introducing him. Even them, I don't know. They fell in love at first sight because when we were doing these house parties, they were doing some things, but I was not, I was not disturbed because she's my sister. She can't do anything. So yes, that's when they met and they started having a rapport. But in 2016, that's when she came and told me, why is your boyfriend following me on Twitter? And now that's when I was, I was like, uh, it's okay. But now I didn't know that it would come to something more. Mm -hmm. And so after my gig in 2016, that was, I can't remember exactly when it was, but after we were done, we went home with my sisters. And um, I remember in June, June 2016, that's when now I found them, Kabisa. Uh, I was at home, we went home, with uh, the whole family went home in Embu now. And I went through my sister's phone. My younger sister, my younger sister was playing with my elder sister's phone. And so when, as she was scrolling, I saw a picture of my elder sister with this boyfriend of mine making out. And I was like, hey, no, I can't imagine what I'm seeing. And so uh, after, after I saw the picture, I just left the phone there and I went to my room and I cried. I really cried. And when they, 
noticed that something was wrong with me, they just came and asked me, what is wrong? Do you think so-and-so is having a real friendship with someone? And I was like, I've not said anything like that. Why are you doubting yourself? And I just, any, I didn't want to talk to anyone at that moment because I've seen what I've seen, but I don't want to tell them that I know. So the they are together in this event? Or you're just with no, your family? I, yes, I, we are just oh. with my family because mm. now I've gone home for holidays. Mm -hmm. And the following day, I was not feeling okay because I, I felt as if maybe this family, they don't want me in their house and they're doing this to make me leave. Remember, they didn't know that I knew. So the following day, mom noticed that I was not okay and she asked, what is wrong? And I asked and I told her everything that I saw. And I remember mom's words were like, if you can't stay with someone, if you can't stay in, with peace in, with someone, then it's good if you leave. And that was like, you should leave, you know. Uh, so I told her, I'm going to Nairobi, I'm going back to Nairobi to my house. Let me just take a moment to you know, sink in whatever is going on. I went to Nairobi. I remember my sister texting me with my mom's phone and telling me, uh, if this guy is the one who's going to make us uh, separate then I will leave him and I was like yes please leave him I also don't want him let's stay as a family but that didn't stop there that was just any something just to tell me just to kunifraisha and so after June 2016 July I went back home I thought now my sister is over with this guy but little did I know that they were still together now the relationship was so deep in July when I went home uh, at night when we were sleeping, he was, she was talking to someone and that voice was like the voice of that guy that I, I was dating. So I was like, you're still talking to this guy and we decided to, se to se both of us to separate from him. So I felt, no, I can't continue. Uh, the following, I, no, after two days I told my mom, me, I can't stay in this house, I'd rather go. So. I decided to leave. I went back to Nairobi, but I still had this love for my family that I still went back home. So in August, I went now home back again for holidays. But now the worst thing is that now these guys, they are together. The parents know they are together. And there's nothing I can do. They've decided to date. And when I went, I remember in August when I went home, I was so happy to see them, everybody, my mom, my sisters. I bought my mom a gift. I went and gave her. I saw my sister and I hugged her and I was so happy to see her. But something deep inside me was like, hey, no, she's betraying you. So the following day, actually I was staying a day. I, I, I used to go that day, the following day, I just leave because I didn't feel it good to be in that house and so I left uh, fast forward they decided I decided to leave them now to date whether they want to date whether they want to do whatever they want yeah. they can go ahead in November now I fell into after I found out that they were now they were serious, serious? in their relationship mm -hmm. I fell into depression and frustration mm -hmm. and I was like hey God I don't have anyone to look up to I don't have parents that I'll go and tell them this and this is going on, or is this going on? Because no, the parents are supporting her. Because Nakumbuka, even before I left, something I forgot to mention, mom told me, maybe you were sent by God to bring your sister a husband. Ah. And I was like, are you even serious? Wow, and, wow, wow. And yes, I, felt into de I fell into depression, I fell into frustration. I didn't talk to anyone about And this it. guy all along never took his time to explain anything? No. He didn't. Oh. He was not even bothered. I don't think either of them was bothered. Because if they were, I think they would have stopped whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. But they were not bothered. So when I fell into depression and frustration, I went to drinking. And I was, I think drinking was my food, was my everything. I used to drink, 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 drink and party. And in the midst of partying and drinking, I fell into random guys. You know how these things work. So... November, I met a guy. It was barely a week. I went with him, and that's how I got pregnant with my kid. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, December, I went. It, I, I found out that I was pregnant in December 2016, the first week, mm -hmm. and I went home and told mom, you know what? I think I'm pregnant. 
and they were happy you know getting pregnant now that means you're out of the way for this to, to continue oh. so definitely they were happy i thought at that moment <laughs> i thought they were happy for me because i'm the having a child, child yeah. but Good think, coming to thinking about it yeah. it was because now you have come out of the way completely so your aunties and uncles are no longer part of your life no my aunties my uncles are not no longer part of my life because they think I'm a bad influence but they, they always thought I'm a bad influence because they are warning me about this person but I don't want to listen they're warning me so about how did you get connected to these foster parents uh, my foster mom mm. and my biological mom they were best friends since ah. college okay yes so ah. they knew each other and I knew them and when we were young we used to go to their house more often than we used to go to our relatives okay. and even my relatives knew this lady okay because she used to come and visit us all right yeah i get it so yeah. our viewer we are going to take a break and hear the rest of the story how now she's become a mother after such a horrible ordeal see you after the break So welcome back our viewer. My guest is Jackie and she's sharing about her journey betrayal by somebody she considers a sister. And of course um, her foster mom, the best friend of her late mom. And they're okay with her being pregnant, not for the reasons that she thought, but because it was convenient. Okay. So now you carry the pregnancy. Are you out of depression, drinking, or they are still, is now bundled together? It's a package of crisis. Yes, it's a package <laughs> of crisis, apparently. Yeah. Now I'm drinking, I'm partying in 2016. But now, when in 2017, I remember in January, uh, I had a horrible pain. Because now I was like, depression and pregnancy they don't go along it's mm -hmm. either you terminate the baby or you let go of whatever you're feeling mm -hmm. but i was not ready to let go of whatever i was feeling how were you feeling were you feeling bitter betrayed yes i was feeling bitter i was feeling as if i want to go and crush these guys i i, I don't know it was a, a, a frustration that i can't even explain mm -hmm. i felt betrayed i felt as if the world can open up and swallow me and you no. never thought counseling or anybody no, to help? That moment, no, drinking was everything because mm -hmm. I would drink and sleep, drink and sleep. How bad was it drinking? I used to buy two bottles of whiskey and put, I remember in town, before now I got pregnant, when I realized my sister and my ex were dating, I went to town, a certain club in town, I bought two bottles of whiskey and took them alone without anything the way i got home i don't know but i remember i got sick for a whole week a whole week i didn't i didn't even wake up from my bed and this time were you pregnant no that time and now i wasn't pregnant okay yeah but it got that bad it got that bad mm -hmm. now when i got pregnant that's when now i continued but now it was little but i still continued drinking and in january uh when i got this now january 2017 when i got this horrible pain i went to the doctor and they were like, you're pregnant and you're drinking. I was like, yes. And so I continued. In general, I didn't have a stable job, I remember. I didn't have so a stable job. So how are job. you paying your bills? My mom had left us some inheritance. So oh. that is what I was using. Apparently, I feel so bad because I squandered that money with drinking. And wow. it was not really a really nice thing. So in January 2017, I continued. I used to go to work and I didn't have a stable job, but I, I used to have a job at least I could keep busy and mm -hmm. keep my mind off. So I used to go to work and January, February, March, April, April, my friend came, a friend from, I consider her now my sister. Now this is someone I can tell you that for sure this is a sister who has held my hand. She used to come from coast and to my house and tell me, you know what, Njeri, um, um, she calls me Njeri, it's either you let go of whatever you, you, are, you are thinking about, it's already, I think it was almost an year from the br breakup, so you better let go. I never used to eat, but then my meal was Indomin and tea. And she used to come and ask me, unakula Indomin na chain and you're pregnant, are you serious? And you're drinking, like, no, just leave me alone. A point when I, I used to go for my scanning, I remember a doctor telling me, you know what, Jackie, I was now six months pregnant, 
around me she to he told me you better get rid of this pregnancy or you let go of whatever you're you're thinking because you are six months pregnant you are less than 50 kgs your kid is 0 0.68 grams and you're six months pregnant oh, are you even wow, serious wow, wow. so the doctor told me do we terminate this baby or will you let go of whatever you are feeling and so i decided let me now let go of something not letting so you go of the feeling bitterness. a connection with the baby yes I, I, uh, abortion was not even part of me i wanted to keep the child and not i wanted to keep the child so that i can show them there's someone who got me pregnant you know they don't know the father no one knows the father someone who got me pregnant and this baby can make me can make my life bearable and so in july was it no in june 26 in 2017 sorry i saw a job advert at the newspaper and i applied for it i didn't know i would i would get that job apparently that's why i work till now mm. so i applied and i went for an interview four days later i was called in i told them that i was pregnant and they told me no you do not discriminate that's how i got my job and that's why i am till to date wow yes and so god was faithful i got you a job at least now i will be able to take care of, your baby. Take care of my child so I gave birth in August 2017. So my relatives came to know about my pregnancy in July yeah. when I was now eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. And they decided to take care of me till mm -hmm. I gave birth. Wow. And that was an advantage for me because me, I didn't even know how I'll uh, give birth and where I will give birth. So you relocated from Nairobi? No, I didn't relocate from Nairobi because now my job is in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But they came for me. They told me that they're going to carry me through. And when I'm about to give birth, uh, they will come for me and take me now to a uh, wow. hospital. That was so kind. Yes. and uh, So they were they happy that now the pregnancy was not for the other guy? Well, they, or they didn't, didn't ask you? They didn't even ask. I was not even talking about it. Ah. All they knew that it was uh, I was pregnant mm -hmm. so uh, in August when I was almost due I remember my pain started coming when I was at work mm -hmm. I called my auntie and told her hey I think I'm almost and she came from the way those people came for me I didn't even believe they were the ones who were no they left me behind wow they they came and they took me I remember we reached Nyeri at around 11 p.m. I, w I had been booked uh, at Outspan Hospital. Mm -hmm. Doctors there were And amazing. that's a very good hospital. Yes, yeah. it was. And so I, they it, really had come back big. Yes, yeah. they had come very up, uh, very big. And I had been booked for a private doctor. So everything was sorted, a private wing, everything. And I was happy. My baby would be, I would give my, I would give birth in a nice hospital. So were you ready? Had you bought clothes? Were you ready? <laughs> Honestly, I hadn't bought anything. What were you thinking? Nothing. I don't know. I was. <laughs> I don't. I can't. You were still depressed. Yes, I was still frustrated. I was like, I hey hey. Okay, so I've left. Honestly, I've left this guy for my sister, and I can't believe you had not gotten over I him. Had, yes, I hadn't gotten over him, mm -hmm. and so my aunties came through. They bought everything for me. My friends, my high school friends, now they had known I, I'm pregnant. They did a baby shower for me and they I think they bought most of the things. Wow. They bought baby clothes, baby towels, everything. I hadn't bought anything at all. Oh. So yes, my friends and my family came through for But me. you were going for your antenatus? Yes, I was going I went I think I went four times. I didn't go all through. <laughs> Even the pills, I didn't take them for a I only took them for a month. And so it was it was not a very nice moment. So for how me. how many how many cages did your baby weigh? 2.7 when she was being that born. was good yes that I did was good. good so eventually you recovered yes eventually uh -huh. i recovered because now i had love from family and friends mm -hmm. and so i decided to let go of my sisters and to let go of my family i had never talked to them 2017 i gave birth in august october august september october i came back i was called in to work uh, so when i came back i was almost graduating now i had gone to school back mm -hmm. to school in 2015 I was graduating in November 2017 and on my graduation day my foster mom came I actually invited her I wanted to see her and I wanted her to meet my baby and so 2017 she came and I remember that evening on my graduation day my foster sister calls me now the elder one and she tells me guess what sees you're going to be an auntie I'm like are you pregnant for so and so 
she was like, yes, told her congratulations, but this is the end of me and you, and never call me again. And that was the end. I never called them, I never texted them, nothing. I, I was like, no, no, this has gone beyond. You still not <laughs> recovered from this guy? I've not recovered, and you're telling me you're pregnant for him. It was, any, it was I think they thought, the as you were saying, that you've found, you've gotten somebody else and you've moved on. I've moved on. Mm. But it wasn't. So that's why I'm telling you, I, I sunk into frustration alone. I didn't talk about it. I didn't want anyone to know about it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And so 2017, when I found out about my sister, I decided now to let go completely and mm -hmm. to forget about that story completely. And now to start seeking forgiveness my forgive forgive myself and also forgive my family and so i started my journey i forgave them 28 i decided i, I don't want any man in my life no one so 27 the rest of the 2017 2018 i stayed without a man and without dating anyone it was just me and my child i gave her everything i vowed to give her everything that she missed when i was pregnant and in 2019... <laughs> so you are dealing with even the guilt. <laughs> yes, I'm dealing with even the guilt again now. In 2019, I decided to step up and now date again because I thought I had healed. So I found a guy in 2019 and we started dating. We dated for an year, the whole of 2019. But now issues started coming. I told him, by the, when I met this guy, I told him I am a mother of one. And any guy I meet, I always tell them I'm a mother of one. And you have to love my baby equally the way you love me. And so, at least for him, we started being friends. First, we, we were friends for, I think, three months. And then now we started dating. And so in January, February, we continued. The love was sweet. It was so nice he used to treat me like a queen i don't think i've ever met a guy who treated me the way ah, he did wow he used to treat me like a queen and i honestly loved it because i wanted to feel loved i wanted my baby to feel loved but one thing he was not so connected with my baby as i was he never saw i don't think he ever met my baby during my court, courting with him and so issue started in august during his birthday i remember i had booked a hotel in at Long Mombasa Road for his birthday to go take him out for dinner. And uh, when I told him to, I didn't want to tell him that I'm taking out him out for dinner for his birthday. So I told him, just put a certain date, don't uh, have any agenda. And he asked me, why are you telling me not to have any agenda on that particular agenda? I'm telling him, it, it will be a surprise. And he's like, I don't like surprises. So tell me what it, what it is. And if you're not telling me, I'm not going. I was like, it's okay, fine then. It was for your birthday. And he told me, you know, I don't like surprises, so no, I won't go. We decided to cancel it, and I just gave him a present and we moved on. So during that time, when he now refused to go for that dinner, I was like, no, in my mind I was like, hey, why is he not going? What kind of what is he doing? And um, I remember he used to go for festivals, these uh, festivals, wine festivals, those mm -hmm. festivals, kind of festivals. And he used to tell me that he's going with his, either his sister or his cousin. So, uh, November, November last year, he went for the festival, a certain festival, I can't remember which one. And he, uh, he told me he's going with his cousin. And so my friends were still in that festival and they met him and they told me, and they asked me, they called me and asked me, Jackie, why so and so? And I'm like, so he has gone for a festival with a cousin. Apparently, my friends knew this girl because she was also a friend to them, but they didn't know that they were there. And uh, they called me and told me, no, this girl is not the cousin. They, they're not even the related. Same. Yes, they're not related. And so I decided I will hold my horses until when I'm ready to confront him. So I remember it was on 29th November 2019. I'm a member of Sitam Valley Road. And that day I decided I want to go to church. And it was just prayers. And I remember Pastor Egon was the one praying. And she said, if there's anything that is causing you not to have joy, come to the front. Oh. And I went to the front. That was on Friday. I remember I didn't even pray. I didn't even do anything. I just went to the front and I cried. And she came and touched my head and 
I remember her prayers was like, God, see the tears of this girl. And when we finished prayers, I just went home. I didn't even wait for the grace or anything. I just went home. And I was still crying. I was still feeling bad about it. Because now I found, on, yeah, that was on Friday. On 30th now, that's when my friends are calling me to tell me that they have found this girl with another girl. And so Saturday, I decided I won't talk to him. Sunday, I won't talk to him. On Monday morning, when I, I reached work, I called him. He blocked me. I called him with another so number. So he knew? Yes, he knew. He knew you he saw you my knew. friends. He knew, okay. he knows my friends. And so he blocked my number. I called him with another f number. He picked up and I asked him, why are you blocking me? Now he unblocked my number and he texted me. And so I texted him and I asked him, why are you cheating on me with, with someone you tell me is your cousin? And he told me, I've not cheated on you. I've replaced you. Uh -huh. <laughs> And so that was like, wow. eh, wow. you know, being replaced. It's like you are just something there. <laughs> just to una chazia kitu and then you just dump it whenever you feel like you are done with it. So it really pained me. It really did. And remember this guy, during our year of dating and or rather courtship, I used to spend so much time with him than I did with my daughter. This time my daughter is still breastfeeding. He will call me and tell me today, can you come to my house? You mean the Uyo, I've already gone. Weekends, it was for him. Friday, Saturday, I would come back home on Sunday. Anytime he would tell me that, uh, I want to see you, I would be there. Yani, after, after breaking up with him, that's when I was like, I, by the way, what was I doing? I spent much time with a guy more than I spent with my daughter. That during my courtship around to May Hapo, I was, I don't know how I felt, but I felt as if I wanted to give away my kid because I don't know. There was just something that came in me. And I told my relatives, by the way, I want to give up my child. And I want to give up, I want to give her up to a family where she will never know that I was the mother. And they told me, no, bring that child home. Nikapeleka mtoi home at my auntie's place in Nakuru. She stayed there for three weeks and then I was like, hey, uh -uh, no, I need to go for my kid. At that moment, I don't know what was going I on I think you were still head. depressed. You were still depressed. I didn't know. But now, after dating this guy, I, was, I had gone for counseling. Now I decided to seek counseling because I was like, hey, uh -uh, no, this is too much now. Now I have a job. So I didn't think it was depression. But I really wanted to give up my child and stay a life that I would enjoy. Yeah, thought, you felt like uh, she was limiting your freedom. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Wow, you take a break and then we'll get to the rest of the story. Our viewer, a young lady boldly declaring that Jesus is able to make you go through some serious moment of pain. Because when you see her sharing her story, she's, she's not sharing from a place of pain, but a place of healing. See you after the break. So welcome back, our viewer. My guest is Jackie, and she's sharing her story about single motherhood, two failed relationships, depression, living like an orphan, you know, having no support system. But she's come here to motivate and encourage somebody. So now you change your your desire. You after t after three weeks, you go back for your baby. Yes. Uh -huh. Is it that love came back, or you yes. felt the void? No, I felt as if I'm giving away the joy of my life. I've and I was like, what if I never get another child? Hey, no, I can't. And then, you know... And that, this time, the guy is not in your life? Or? No, the father of the baby is not in my life. This not the even the father, the second guy you got. No, he's mm -hmm. still in my life, but okay. I hadn't told him what I'm yeah. going through. But then yeah. he didn't know. I think he never knew me that mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. he, he thought he knew me, but he didn't know me. Mm -hmm. So after, we, after I went back for my kid... I was like, hey, uh -uh, now this is too much. But I was still not spending so much time with her as I used to spend with this guy. And so after, no, in November when I broke up with, with him, when he told me now he has replaced me, because when someone tells me tells you I'm a could replace, there's, there's nothing there to uh, Like he about. says that, like, outright. Yes, it was outright. I've replaced you. And I, to, and I asked him, no, so our love has crashed. He told me, no, our love has faded. 
So that's someone uh -uh. who, Nenny, he, he never valued you in the first place. Never valued you. And you him. never saw that coming. And I never saw that coming. But it got, it got to me and I was like, eh, this is now my, my second relationship and it has failed. Do I go back to where I was in the first place? I'm a do I move on? And I decided, no, I won't go back to drinking. And I found Christ then. And uh, I remember no one at work, no one at home, not even my friends knew what I was going through. And I decided to keep quiet and shut my system. Anyone would come and agitate me and agitate me and I would feel so bad as in I was not talking to anyone. I'm a PA to a boss. When he calls me and scolds me, I would literally cry. I would go to the toilet and cry. He wouldn't know what what is causing me to cry. But I was feeling, I know, I'm going through a lot. So then, in December now, I decided to get to counseling. And uh, I went to church, because we usually have counseling in church. And I went through counseling and, they, and I was told, Jackie, do you know one thing that you're feeling is, I think you're desperate for someone. Because I really wanted someone to become to my husband. You. Yes, yeah. and to love me. I was really desperate to have a husband. But I was told, no, stop it. Don't, don't be desperate anymore for a man. Because a man will know when you're desperate. That's and true. he will use you. You see, this one has already told you that he has replaced you. That means he used you and he was happy about it. His life is moving on. I remember I, I lost my weight now again. I went back to 44 kgs. Ah, December, January. No, no, January this year. And I'm like, Ay, eh, eh. <laughs> it's not fair. January, February. December, January, February, I was at 44 kgs constant. No eating, no nothing. Now my child has stopped breastfeeding now because she's now old enough. But I still have this. I can say... I can't say it was frustration, but it was again depression the second time. Because now, eh, when someone tells you replacement, as in that thing that was not even thinking. So yeah, yeah, it was. It hit me so bad. He never even gave you time to process what he was no. telling you. He never even came back to check if I was okay. He never even called. But I was like, no, it's time to move on. For that relationship, I moved on within three months. In March. I decided now it's time to tell my story because how many people are going through all this? Mm -hmm. How many people will kill? Because remember when in my first relationship I was so bitter I felt as if I would go and do something bad to my family or to that guy. But I, I didn't want that to come back in my second relationship, my second breakup. I remember there's a sister, I, we usually have a safari group and a sister told me, you know what Jackie, change your prayers. Stop praying for God, give me a spouse. And start telling God, I want to be more into you. Yeah. Let me seek the kingdom of God first and then everything shall, be, shall added be added into you. And so I stopped praying about a spouse. I decided, no, I don't want to have a spouse anymore. Okay, yes, I want to have a spouse, but at the right time. And the I right one. Yes, and the right and one. And not the one you're pray. seeking after. Yes, because now, one <laughs> that is desperation now. Yeah. It, it, it's, it comes to a point of So did you come to a place of a personal decision? When did you get born again? I got born again now in December. Yeah. When I broke up with him. I literally okay. went to church and told God, no, I'm it's stopping. Over. Yes. But now in March, that's when now I recovered. Yeah. March this year. That's when I started telling of my story. And I got a passion and a desire to encourage the young yeah. people and the young generation to tell them that all is not lost. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you bury yourself in relationships, mm -hmm. you bury yourself in a toxic maybe marriage or other, mm -hmm. and you're staying there because of a kid. No. Um, I wanted to encourage the young generation, more so the, the young guys and the young ladies. They're the ones who are more affected. When you are there and a man is cheating on you and you are still there and you are seeing, or a man tells that he has replaced you and you are still there. Something is wrong on. with you now. Yeah, something, yeah, something is, is wrong. wrong with you. And so you should move on. You should uh, bury that and stand up in the mirror and say, you know what, I, I am valuable and I should go on. I should, I should move on. Mm -hmm. Stop clinging on to that person. Because me, I used to cling on to this guy. I think... He used even to see it. During mm -hmm. our relationship, I used to give him so much time. 
so much value. You and were so God. selfless. Yes, I was so. So what has happened now to the other ones, um, the, for your foster sister and your first love? Honestly, I've never talked to them. You've never? I've never talked to them, but I forgive them. So you don't have the hard I feelings? No, I don't have any hard feelings. Even when I see them today, I would be like, wow, I forgive you guys and I hope you're okay. Because mm. one, they have a child. I can't come between that child. The child is so innocent. So I forgive my foster sister, I forgive my foster family, I forgive my ex. And I wish, I always pray that he gets the right person. Because in my heart I feel my sister is not the right person for him. Why I do you feel? feel it. I still <laughs> feel that my sister Why is not you the feel right that person way? for him. Because what he did, he didn't do it out of... When it, that relationship was not that... It was never meant to be. I can tell you for free. It was not meant to be. One, my sister is older than him. So, as in it can't work. But love knows no boundaries. Yes, love knows both. I still feel in my heart that they're not meant to be with each other. So I always pray to God. God, give my sister a good husband and give this ex a good wife. That's what I always want for them. A okay. happy and joyous life. If you were given a chance to reunite with any of them, would you do it? I would reunite with my sister. I still miss her and I still Your love sister. her. Your sister? Yes, yeah. she's still my sister. Mm -hmm. Regardless of everything that she did, she's still my sister. And I forgave her mm -hmm. completely. Okay. Yes, because I moved on. If I hadn't moved on, I don't think I would have entered into this second relationship. Yeah. But I moved on. Okay. Yes. So what do you foresee uh, your life becoming? Um, mm. or what are your plans? Well, my plan for now is to reach out to as many young generation as possible, mm -hmm. to encourage them, to give them motivation, and tell them that all is not lost. Mm -hmm. Like yesterday, I had a story of a standard six girl killing, stabbing yeah. a from two boyfriend. Yeah. As in those stories, they really hurt me because what if I had done the same to my sister? What if yeah, and then you look the at that scenario, a standard six falling in love. Exactly get into it's, that level of stabbing mm -hmm. it's a young so it tells girl. you there is more of a psychological and a social issue than just the stabbing yes and also people and people out there they don't know what you're going through like me no one knew what i was going through not even people who are surrounding me and call themselves my friend they never knew i was sinking into depression apart from one lady who knew that i was sinking into depression and that is the one she's the one who held my hand ha hand and walked with me all through because wow. I think even parents should know when their kids are going through something. Mm -hmm. You will just be there, smiling at others when you're out there. But when you go to your house, because eh, like me, I used to cry. I used to cry every day, every single day. Mm -hmm. And for me to get into drinking, that means I didn't have anyone to let yeah. out whatever I was feeling. And so... In March this year, that's when I decided, let me let me let it out. Let me yeah. encourage us all out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe so many people are going through the same thing, and but they don't know. Yes, they're afraid, to, yes, talk they're afraid to talk about it. Or they're afraid of moving on. Yeah. You have to move on. You have to value yourself first. You have to love yourself first. I decided one thing, God above everything, loving myself first so that I can love my daughter the same way I love myself. Wow. And I decided for a spouse, he will come at the right time and the right person will come. For now, I, I'm not praying for a spouse. Amen. I am not. Wow, glory yes. to God. And I, I must commend you for that courage. You're one courageous person. And maybe that's why when they are dealing with you, they become blunt and, and forthright because they feel you're strong on the outside. Sometimes what we call our strength may be used uh, against us, but keep it, guard it. You're a strong woman inside and uh, thank God that you've been able to recollect your life. Yes. And I've decided to move on. And of course, we wish you well with your daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pray that she'll become the great woman she will. that you have always aspired she'll become. Yes, she will. Yeah, great. So our viewers, that is the story of Jackie. What an awesome testimony from a young lady that has decided to step up. Don't allow the enemy to crush you, even after you've gone solo. Gather your strength again and move on. And for young ladies that are finding love, kindly, the love is no longer blind. Love has eyes. And God uses the eyes of our loved ones. If you see everybody raising their eyebrows because of somebody you love, why don't you stop and listen? Because sometimes they see what you cannot see. And above all, if you've been dumped or something has gone wrong, 
pick your pieces together and find support, find help, don't die alone. And from Mira and Ruth Wamoyo and everybody around us, uh, the technical team, everybody plus Jackie, we wish you a blessed night. God bless you.